Our call to worship this morning is by Betsy Damon, who wrote Water Talks, empowering communities to know, restore, and preserve the waters. We are drops flowing as one river, rising as mist, floating as clouds, sparkling as dew. Remember, Water is a human right. Water is an earth right. Water is the right to life. Water is the single enlivening element on which we all depend. We light our chalice today in the power of community as one earth with a common yearning for the waters of life. We light this flame in honor of the interdependent web in which we are woven. And may all that restores flow into this place, in each place where you are, that we might worship in spirit and in truth. Blessed be.
Welcome to All Souls Church. My name is Justice Tuya. I use he, they pronouns, and I will be your worship associate today. You are welcome here, no matter who you are, where you come from, how you identify, who you love, or your background. You are welcome here. We invite you to join us as we celebrate the differences in our spiritual journeys, to question all that you know while rooting yourself in love. You are welcome to join us in this community as we learn, live, and love together. All are welcome as we reflect on that which gives us each meaning and value. For those of you joining us online, we welcome you into this sacred space where you may find community, refuge, hope, and healing. And while we may be geographically separated, we gather today as one. If you're visiting us for the first time or still feel new here, please raise your hand so that we can give you an All Souls welcome. Do we have any visitors? Welcome. At coffee hour after service, we do ask that you grab a red coffee mug so that we can more easily identify you. Coffee hour will be held today in Pierce Hall, which is out the doors to your right. The order of service for today was made available by the ushers. It can also be accessed on your phone by using the QR code in the pews in front of you. And for those on Zoom, a link is provided in the chat. Our weekly email newsletter is the main way to stay up to date on all that's happening here. Please sign up using the link on the All Souls webpage. We acknowledge with respect the Piscataway people on whose traditional territory All Souls now stands and whose relationship with the land west of the Chesapeake Bay continues to this very day. We encourage you to research the native peoples of the lands where you reside, either here or in another area. Find out what indigenous organizing is happening and how you can support it. And for each of us who are not native to the lands that we now live, may we live into the eighth principle, building beloved community with awareness and love. Each week we greet and behold one another in person and virtually if you're on Zoom, I'd suggest you go to the gallery view and turn your camera on if you're willing and able. And if you're in the sanctuary, we encourage you to get up, to move around, and to greet one another as you are comfortable. Let's take time now to say hello and offer greetings. <laughs>
Thank you very much. Let's continue our conversations and greetings after the service. And again, welcome to All Souls Church. souls. 
I'm Reverend Bill Sinkford. My pronouns are he and him. And in addition to that wonderful music this morning from both the choirs, there are a number of other things for you to note this morning. The first day for All Souls Church gardening will be next Saturday, April 29th. It'll be from 9 to noon. And if you would like to help care for the part of the earth for which this church is steward, just come. Everything you need will be provided. Meet in the courtyard at 9. Meg Staines is the contact for this. Also, and this is very important, we need more help for the next Sunday luncheon on the 30th. That is next Sunday. Details are in the newsletter. Julia Washburn and Bill Coolis are the leaders on this. You can contact them or Rose Eaton. And on May 1st, we will hold the inaugural, the first event in All Souls' new social justice author series. National best-selling author and political commentator Steve Phillips will talk about his new book, How We Win the Civil War, Securing a Multiracial Democracy and Ending White Supremacy for Good. Phillips warns that the Confederates never stopped fighting the Civil War and that progressives must recognize the true nature of the struggle in order to create a truly multiracial democracy. This is the first in a new speaker series supported by the All Souls Church Beckner Advancement Fund, which provides grants for social justice organizing both within and beyond the congregation and in the community. The event will be hybrid, in person or online, with tickets on a sliding scale beginning at zero. All proceeds from these events will benefit the ongoing mission and ministry of All Souls. So that's Monday, May 1st at 7 p.m. I hope I'll see many of you there. Invite your friends. And on May 6th, the River Road Unitarian Universalist Church will host a DMV climate convocation for earth ministry groups to consider creating a UU climate network for collective action on environmental justice. You can check the church calendar for details. We now turn to the concerns and joys of the members of this community. First, congratulations for Franny Downey and Mike Brown, who were married here in the sanctuary on April 15th. We wish them much happiness in their life together. And we send healing wishes to Lucy Summers for her upcoming knee surgery, which will be next week on Tuesday. And finally, we offer our condolences to Chanda Creasy on the recent death of her mother, Marnie. We hold Chanda and the family in this time of loss. I now invite you to speak aloud the names of those you are holding in your heart this morning or to write them in the chat if you're on Zoom. We hold all those names and all those whose names remain in the silent sanctuaries of our hearts. Will you pray with me now? Spirit of life, spirit of love, we live between beginnings and endings, celebrating milestones along the way. It can be easy to see ourselves as playing the lead in a drama that centers our concerns. Help us remember that we are all children of the earth, deeply connected and interconnected to the creation that sustains us. Help us hold our individual worth as one great truth, but our collective responsibility as the other. Help us ground our lives in gratitude. Help us live as part of creation, not as its reason for being. And help us find a balance that does not deny our power, but holds an accountability that can help us point our lives toward hope. May all of that be so. Ashe and Amen.
for all those things named and unnamed, we gather as one body. Blessed be. Amen. And for all those who must now flow to their religious education classes, children, youth, teachers, we invade a few moments of flow. We could give them a round of applause because because they are insanely amazing and um, just the reason for us to be here. So as we hear the hubbub, it seems appropriate that our reading is about migratory birds. This is from an essay uh, called Identity. It's in a book that is wonderful called Dawn Songs, A Bird Watcher's Field Guide to the Poetics of Migration. It is by J. Drew Lanham, who is a Clemson University professor and a MacArthur Foundation Fellow. Imagine yourselves as a bird. Take on feathers and wings. Give up your coarse croaking. Let your words become songs and calls. Imagine. Imagine yourself poised on the edges of a great migration outward into a world of storms. You face headwinds, perhaps as I do, says the author, of hate and bigotry and bias. Stretched out before you is a yawning gulf of difficulty and you are feeling the zuganru, a new word for me, the migratory restlessness. And you are eager, though unknowing, what the journey across the gulf of challenge will hold. You look beyond yourself and you see a dark night, but there are others who have flown ahead to guide you. Those that have flocked before, author, abolitionist, activist, poet, professor, preacher, teacher. They have winged on ahead of us in the ink black sky to show us the way. And know that behind you and before you, others are flocking. There are millions flocking in common destination cause to do better, to be better. Now and going forward, fly on, fly on. Fly on through the long dark night and perch at dawn. Rest, sing as the sun rises, forage, do it all over again. Trust that there will be witnesses to your going and your becoming. I'd like to dedicate my preaching today, something I don't usually do, uh, to two people. One, um, the newly found colleague, Reverend Summer Abayate, who preached last Sunday in a way that opened me up into the message that is mine today. And also in remembering the ancestors who have gone before in this congregation for 200 years, including the one whose stole I wear today, Jane Pfeiffer. Jane was a Reiki master and a Sufi master 
in her late 80s and 90s, and one time said to me, would you ever want this doll, this stole I have that came from my Sufi initiation in New Mexico? I was like, yes, I would. And, and when I wear this, I think of that um, ancestral lineage in this place and the deep care involved. In this time of the Anthropocene, the era that is dominated by human damage and gifts, most of our own species understands with alarm that we are in multiple crises. And the inner restlessness is strong, the Zuganru, the anxiety towards migratory longing. And yet, where to go, how to be, what paths even exist or can be designed, some have been submerged. And the inner and the outer search for a place to be home is our fundamental longing. We often must travel in uncertainty in order to land a nest. I think on Earth Day, on every single day, we might focus on our shared ability for creativity and action. And one lens is through the central reality of water, our common heritage. In her book, Water Talk, the artist and ecological activist Betsy Damon tells us, remember, water is a human right, water is an earth right, water is the right to life. Water is the single enlivening element on which we all depend. I know Betsy Damon. She is a dynamic force of nature, now in her 80s, who has been creating a kind of collaborative visual art, performance art, and powerful community workshops around water for decades. And Betsy gathers multiple groups in a region I think that they are for this idea, yes. Someone screaming in joy. <laughs> she gathers multiple groups in a region to listen to one another, to create art first, to map the understanding of the waters second, and to work in community throughout. And she writes and designs for complexity and resilience, she says, understanding fully that single purpose design around water, around anything, can be short-sighted. It can have unhealthy intended and unintended consequences. And so any narrative of one need and one solution is dangerously partial. It fails to see the web of water of which we are a part. And the interdependent spirals and vortices that send energy through complex relationships from multiple perspectives. If you reside in this region, you know we are in a wonderful web of water. The Potomac and Anacostia Rivers, Rock Creek, Sligo Creek, the Shenandoah River Valley, the Patuxent River Networks, and so much more, all flowing in various stages of health or disease into the vast Chesapeake Bay and ultimately flowing to the great Atlantic. The ancient peoples of this land and the sea convergence were both rooted and migratory Native American peoples. And the much more recent peoples, the ones who brought in settlers and enslaved peoples were in damaging single purpose narratives that exist to this day. You know them, manifest destiny, colonial entitlement, missionary zeal, all the elite forms of extractive capitalism, white supremacy and domination, still radiating damage in the networks even amidst the dissolving and recreating forms. And in this region, we reside precisely where the waters flow, and yet we still become blindly entrenched in our own human rhythms, in the structures and institutions. We repeatedly 
forget to remember. And the cost, the cost has been enormous, very high. The ancient memory of connective water has never left the consciousness of some indigenous and tribal peoples. We are interdependent one. We are within earth. We are human fractals in a vastly larger spiral, and we come from nature. There are many healthy ways that are always available to move forward, and we bring gifts from multiple generations. My core belief is this. We must be rooted in the wisdom of this planet in order to thrive. I think that's why I'm still here. You may have heard the phrase, co-creation with nature. A complex and deep partnership considers Earth as kin, as mother, grandmother, home. And a partnership that builds embodied awareness must anchor and root us in what roots us to the ground, the elements, the chakras, a wheel of ways that we might flow, energy, quantum physics, shared quantum space. Earth, air, fire, water, metal, in the Chinese mapping of life energies. And there is a particular earth longing for each generation alive today, and it is deep. Some older who have known past challenges all too well, and some younger who look towards the future with a particular urgency. John Delavolpe, who is at the Institute of Politics, conducts a national survey of college-age Americans on political issues and trends twice a year. And his most recent book is Fight, how Gen Z is channeling their fear and passion to save America. And the title tells you something about what some of the 70 million children, youth, and young adults who are age 11 to 25 have to say. The Generation Z is very clear that their own future is at risk and that many of us listening will not be alive to see it. Della Volpe says this, they are the most diverse, the most educated, passionate generation in this kind of American history. And like other cohorts of Americans who have seen their share of trauma and chaos in the country, this generation, 11 to 25, is unique in that they do not have a collective memory of the United States of America coming together or united. They don't have a memory, he says, of September 11th or September 12th or September 13th. And so that's one thing that stands this generation apart from all generations since the greatest generation. The second thing, Della Volpe says, is that they've had an ongoing period of disquiet in their lives. So it's a generation that has dealt with more trauma more quickly than any generation in 70 years. And all that trauma happened before the oldest member of this generation turned 25. When neuroscience tells us that our brains are starting to cohere in the most mature iterations. Now trauma is inflaming, it is activating, and the nervous system of the body stores brain memory and autonomic response. We heard that so eloquently from Reverend Summer last week, which is why I cite her sermon today. To work in response to ongoing trauma is to root in all the elements and bring water, earth, and metal to the needed air and fire. The fire and air energies of youth are also gifts to those of us who are older. They wake us up 
out of some very complacent slumbers. They demand action and attention. And so often in these days, the children, youth, and young adults bring a fluidity of identities, a kind of kaleidoscope of creative ways of knowing. They are a new form, a merger of electronic ease and humor and irreverence and body awareness and play. It's a wisdom they possess that comes from navigating great change constantly with all the stresses that entails. And there's so much to learn from those who are literally inhabiting and designing the future forms of the just recently possible. As a spiritual director and coach, which is the other half of my work right now, and I'm not at all souls, I work primarily with those in their middle years who have accumulated mastery and grief. And those folks are becoming practiced at very key skill sets and yet in the wear and tear of repeated challenge and loss. Particularly through these COVID years and this time of this sharp, toxic, poisonous divisiveness, the loss of more shared realities. There is a quickening of what we must digest that is wearing us all down, all ages, all humans who now live in the damage of the Anthropocene. You have a body, it shows somewhere. It lands somewhere in the wisdom of the frame that you are carrying. Albert Einstein, physicist and cosmic mystic, once said, if I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on the solution, I would spend the first 55 minutes determining the question. The proper question to ask. For once I know the proper question, I could solve the problem in less than five minutes. My practices, my offerings, all reside within a primary identity. And this identity is my answer to the question, whose am I? Whose am I? I am home with source, with spirit, and nature first. I have agreed to serve as earth elder I am in co-creation with life patterns that are rising whole while I fully lament and grieve all that is dissolving. We cannot suppress lament and grief. We must open the doors and windows, body, to let it flow. And I remain dedicated to collaborative complex design the kind that allows humans and communities to thrive. Earth elders work to keep the first thing first, to re-anchor in Earth home when we forget or we experience traumas that are old and new, when we become convinced that our self-congratulatory or self-righteous view is the only truth is my Achilles heel. Of course, this is the actual nitty gritty rubber hits the road work of building beloved community to bring all elements into creative unknowing to honor multiple experiences. Everything else is just an idea, a concept, air. Healthy humans cannot live in one element, either literally or figuratively, and when the heat is too high, when inflammation proliferates, your health declines. We experience and know the damage of this in all parts of our culture at present, our body in politic, our networks of health and or toxicity or both together. We experience this in our wise bodies and 
those who are longing for balance of every age and generation, and I am often learning from the youngest, know that we need the grounding of earth, that we need the soothing flow or restorative energy of water. And we only work to change what we love on this planet. And what we love is known in relationships, not concepts, not abstract theories, relationships to all beings and all elements. Where are the trees, the animals, the birds, the waters that have connected deeply with your being? Why are you moving in orphan energy that thinks you are alone? What are the plants and herbs that have given you life? And how do your songs, your music, your art, your expression move us all to a kind of collaborative creation with futures that can rise whole? A teacher of mine, a visionary acupuncturist rooted in the traditional medicine of Chinese five elements, told us a great truth. All sickness is home sickness. All sickness is homesickness. And so the question is, where is your widest, deepest, primary home? Whose are you? Planet Earth is calling you into the peace of wild things, your kindred, all your relations the interdependent web which holds us and the love in which we always reside. I pray with music that you come home. This past weekend, Jason and I spent several hours at the Morris Arboretum and Gardens of the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. It was a beautiful spring day, complete with a literal explosion of plant life and two rather aggressive swan sisters, Flora and Fauna. Like many of you, my own spiritual identity has changed over the course of time, and with it, my own views on divinity. I see the divine in the seemingly mundane, in the vast universe that at times seems to envelop me, in the silence of my own meditative space, in my extended relationships, as complicated as some of them may be, or in the embrace of my closest loved ones. The world is full of beauty, it's full of life and love, and it's full of the divine. I need this community to remind me of why I'm here, what's at stake, and to give me strength to persevere. It's for this reason that I give of my time and treasure to this community. All Souls has a Share the Plate collection. 50% of all non-pledge contributions go to an outside social justice organization each and every month. In April, this organization is dreaming out loud which creates economic opportunities for the DC metro region's marginalized communities through building a healthy, equitable food system. When the offering plates pass, pass today, please be generous. If you're in the sanctuary, the ushers will be passing the plate for our offering. You can also text ASC to 73256. And if you're on Zoom, we welcome you to click on the link in the chat which will direct you to the All Souls online webpage. Thank you in advance for your generosity. Today's offering will now.
rise for the closing hymn.
Now for our benediction with a deep bow of gratitude to Jen and Rochelle and Mark, Ramir, Trey, Caron, interpretive dancer. <laughs> You may be seated. From the Seven of Pentacles, which is the Tarot card about internal process and change in the element of Earth, by March Piercy. Connections are made slowly, and sometimes they grow underground. You cannot tell always by looking what is happening. Live a life you can endure. Make love that is loving. Live as if you like yourself, and it may happen. Reach out, keep reaching out, keep bringing in. And this is how we are going to live for a long time, and yet not always. For every gardener knows that after the digging, after the planting, after the long season of tending and growth, the harvest comes. Blessed be. Amen.
Mm-hmm. 